So now that we went over some of the primitive data types, let's review the process for creating a new extended data type. An EDT is a primitive data type or container with a supplementary name and some additional properties set. For example, we can create an EDT called name based on the primitive data type of string. Thereafter, we can use that new EDT in variable and field declarations in the development environment. Let's look at some of the benefits of EDTs. The first is that code is easier to read because variables have a meaningful data type. For example, name instead of string. Properties of EDTs can be inherited. This means the properties we set for an EDT can be used by all instances of that type, which promotes consistency and also reduces work. For example, account numbers are based on the account num data type, and they have the same properties throughout the system. You can create hierarchies of EDTs, which inherit the properties that are appropriate from the parent down to the child. For example, the item code data type is used as a basis for the markup item code and the price disk item code data types. Most fields in AX tables are based on extended data types. After it's created, it can be reused as many times as it is needed in the application. In this demonstration, let's go ahead and create some EDTs or extended data types to use for our fleet management system. We'll begin by adding new EDTs to our project. So we'll right click the project, go to add, and we'll choose new item. From the left pane here, we're going to go into the data types group and we'll see we have all these different types of EDTs that are based on different primitive data types. So in the first example, we'll do an EDT of type string and we'll call it DB VIN to represent a vehicle identification number and we'll choose add. This will create an EDT string type folder here with our EDT inside of it. So we also have our EDT element designer open and we can go set some properties on this EDT. So on the label, let's go ahead and type in VIN and we want to change the string size probably to be a little larger than 10 because vehicle identification numbers can be quite long. So let's go ahead and just change this to 25. And we'll set our help text to a simple sentence to describe what this is. So I typed a sentence that says, this represents the vehicle identification number. Okay, so we can right click this element and save it. And then we'll continue adding new EDTs. So we'll, re we'll repeat the process by right clicking our project, going to add a new item. This time, let's create an EDT of type date. And we'll use this as a field to represent the year that a vehicle was made. So we'll call this DB year and we'll choose add. It makes a new folder since this is an EDT of type date. We can see our element in there and we can go ahead and set properties on that again. Well, let's continue making our the rest of our EDTs first. So we'll repeat again. And this time we'll choose an EDT of type integer. This will represent a number, a whole number. And we'll call this one DB num of doors. So this integer is going to represent the number of doors that a particular vehicle has. Okay, so there's our folder created with our element. I'll highlight my project again. This time I'm going to press Control shift a for the shortcut key that allows me to add new elements to the project. We'll continue adding different EDT types, and this time let's use an EDT of type real, which is a decimal number, and we'll call this DB fuel capacity. So we can have a fuel tank that is 12.5 gallons, for example. So we'll need a real or a decimal type to represent that. So our folder's created, that's great. 
we'll close that and continue adding. I'm going to use the Control Shift A shortcut again. And now we can choose to add another EDT type. And this time let's use an EDT of type enum. So we discussed base enums in the last module. And they represent a list of literals. So we'll call this uh, DB fuel type code. So there's a finite list of fuel type codes that refer to different fuel types. And we'll add that. So now we have a list of uh, different folders that represent our different EDT types. It's nice and organized. We can go in there and then set properties on our individual EDTs. So now that I've set these properties on this dbvin EDT, I can reuse this on any table anywhere else in the system, and it's going to maintain these properties that I've set, which is the label and the string size. So any properties that you set on it are going to be saved in that EDT and they can be reused. We can also extend this type, which will inherit all of these properties, and then we can change additional properties. So it's almost like a complete copy with some minor changes if that's something you would require. So one more thing we can do with EDTs is have them extend from another EDT or inherit the properties. So for example, I'm going to go to our EDT dates folder where I created this DB year EDT which represents the year a vehicle was made. And I can go down to find, well first of all we have to right click and choose open so we have it in our element designer and then we can go through the properties and set them. Okay, so I can go through here and ex have this EDT extend from another EDT. The extends property is located in the data group. So once I put my cursor here, it brings up this drop down arrow where I can click and choose uh, another EDT in the system that I want this one to inherit the properties from. We can also type it in if we know the name of it off the top of our head. I'm going to try to find one called transdate which is a commonly used date EDT to represent um, different types of dates. Okay, so now that I've chosen that as my extended form, it'll inherit the properties from that transdate system EDT.